Rosa Parks sits anywhere she wants. The first time she sat in, she set off the chain of events that led to the civil rights movement. Ahead in our next half hour, we're going to tell you what event she's sitting out and why. Welcome back to Headline News Tonight. I'm Woody Bakhtiar. Let's check the day's top stories for you now. The latest report by U.N. weapons inspectors apparently hasn't changed any minds on the Security Council. Members continue questioning the chief inspections about Iraqi disarmament. The council is also debating the latest proposal that would give Iraq until March 17th to disarm or face military attack. A vote could come by Tuesday. Palestinian gunmen apparently retaliating for an Israeli army incursion in Gaza opened fire on a Sabbath dinner at a Jewish settlement in the West Bank. The gunmen were disguised as Jews. They killed two settlers. The attack came after Israeli troops seized a heavily populated four square mile section of Palestinian territory in Gaza. And airlines are adopting their own war strategy. Five major carriers say they will have waive rebooking fees and loosen some of their restrictions if flight schedules are disrupted by military action in Iraq. Columbia Space Shuttle astronaut Michael Anderson received a hero's burial today. The 43-year-old payload commander was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. Anderson served as a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force. He will be honored at a public memorial service on Tuesday in his hometown of Spokane, Washington. Michael Anderson was one of seven crew members killed when the shuttle broke up during re-entry on February 1st. Well, here's a quick update for you in the war on terrorism. The White House says it cannot confirm that two of Osama bin Laden's sons have been captured. A Pakistani official says the sons may have been wounded in a raid in Afghanistan involving U.S. and Pakistani forces. He says seven al-Qaeda members were killed. Now, officials at the Pentagon say there's no indication that the U.S. military was involved in any such operation. Still, though, they did not rule out the possibility that it could have been a CIA operation. Well, America's education and homeland security chiefs went back to school today. They're trying to get campuses ready for future acts of terrorism. A national crisis plan will be released to teach schools how to respond to biological and chemical attacks. Thirty million dollars in emergency federal money is also being set aside. Although schools haven't been targeted, Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge says officials need to be prepared. The Montgomery County School District in Maryland is being used as a model. It has handled the 9-11 attacks, the anthrax scare, and the sniper shootings. Researchers have announced a new internet speed record. Imagine sending two full-length, two-hour movies across 6,800 miles in less than a minute. That's 3,500 times faster than a typical broadband connection. Well, Stanford researchers say they've conducted even faster experiments, but those results haven't been certified yet. And don't get too excited about all this. The scientists say the connection isn't practical for home use yet because home computers couldn't possibly keep up. Well, how can you turn a napkin into a product which has the potential to save thousands of lives? Jot down a million-dollar idea on it. Erica Hill has details in this edition of Hotwired. Erica, what are you talking about? Thanks for you know it's a, it's a good way to start something. What we're actually talking about is this credit card size device. It's a low-tech solution to what could actually be a very big problem. It's called the Hazmat Smart Strip. It was developed by Mike Reamer, who's standing to my right here, a man with 17 years of experience as a hazardous materials technician. He joined us in the studio tonight along with his colleague, Lieutenant Chris Aguirre. You're both actually hazmat technicians we should say. Correct. This strip, it, you know, to the folks at home, it probably looks like, okay, we've got this, we've got this little card. It has some, some colored blocks on it. What does it do? How did you come up with the idea? Well, we worked with the National Technology Transfer Center in Wheeling, West Virginia, and we put together a credit card size device that reacts with eight categories of chemicals, toxic chemicals. So the user would wear it, and uh, when the products come in contact, it immediately changes colors. And, and one thing that you had showed us before, we're actually going to we're actually going to change the color. Chris is in his hazmat suit. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the hazmat smart strip. I'm peeling a protective film from that protects the actual litmus that will change color when it comes in contact with one of these toxic industrial chemicals. There's an adhesive in the back. I can go ahead and, and apply it to any part of my body here. I'm going to apply it to my 
wrist area. We're and now gonna... you're going to apply a chemical that could potentially, this is a very watered down version, but this is something you could find potentially if you went into a, a situation. That's and, so uh, as I'm walking around, so everything's all, so far so good, the, the air's good, all of a sudden I come across a barrier of an unknown chemical and as you can see the difference between the smart strip in its original state, and this one that the pH has discolored to a dark black. And you were saying this works with both chemicals that are airborne, it can also work with liquids, it's going to detect those as well. Once you put that on your sleeve, we should mention, once you peel off that protective layer on the front, it lasts for 12 hours? 12 hours operational period, or two year shelf life in the package. This has all come together really quickly. You did this eight months ago? Yeah, we started eight months ago, and um, it's in manufacturing right now, it's available to the public. We've had an overwhelming response, not from just the emergency response community, but um, the public as well for the home and uh, we've been approached from um, industrial uh, providers as well as uh, the military and uh, even the Olympics. They're about $15 a piece. You were also telling me real quickly uh, that there's been some talk of actually expanding this beside, beyond this size to something much larger. Right, for um, public venues such as, like I said, the Super Bowl, the Olympics, um, any type of large trade show where we have a large gathering of people, we can actually put these on the side of buildings. And, and it makes everybody a lot safer. A great idea. And we thank you for coming up from Florida and sharing it with us tonight. Mike Reamer, Lieutenant Chris Aguirre, it's a pleasure having you on the show. And that's going to do it for Hot Wire this hour. I'm Erica Hill. Rudy, Mike. Hey, can you leave some of those for us, please? <laughs> They're really cool, aren't they? They're amazing. I, it Absolutely makes me amazing. feel a whole lot better. Yeah. Okay, Good thank stuff. you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Well, it said there's a broken heart for every light on Broadway. Well, tonight, though, the broken hearted are the people without theater, with the theater tickets. Excuse me. We'll explain why no one is humming show tunes on the Great White Way. That's when headline news continues. That story's next for some. For others, local news is coming up. Oh,